Hello. Welcome to uh, the main top mill. As we say, welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about growing in skills, confidence, and knowledge as a spinner. Um, I don't know whether this is actually, link is actually working um, for the group. Um, so, um, if somebody could let us know this works, um, that would be great. Um, anyway, um, my daughter and I, Erin, and, and I'm Bob, we're fiber design imagineers. Uh, we work with many different types of fibers um, for blends, for making properly made tops and blends. Uh, one of the main reasons uh, why we, we decided to open a mill and uh, do what we're doing right now is because when we work with commercially made tops, um, a commercially made top, um, and this is a marine, a 18 and a half micron merino. I'm trying to find the camera that you can actually see it. It's being very strange. But as you can see, it's kind of, it's a little bit of balance and elasticity, but it's kind of hard to work with and draft from it's it's it kind of, it really fights you so a lot of hand spinners have a you know great deal you know not trouble but it takes a lot of technique uh, to be able to divide that fiber for um, spinning um, what we do is that because we have basically modified um, commercial top making machines um, we and blending machines we've changed the way that they operate so that we can preserve the fiber characteristics of the fibers now why is that important and partially and actually mainly it's because when you try to work from a top all the fibers need to be parallel now those fibers um, in parallel should be also easy to draft out of the out of the uh, top so this is some Rambouillet top and as you can see with very little effort we can draft we draft that fiber out for spinning now as you can see, you know, those fibers are all parallel. So now, when we look at other types of blends, before we get into the specifics of the type of kits we're offering, um, this is a white Gotland, I'm trying to find the blend, and as you can see, Where's the camera? I haven't quite gotten this. Again, as I pull, that fiber is drafting very effortlessly. So when you're hand spinning, now hand spinning can be done with a drop spindle. You have different types of spinning wheels that you operate with foot pedals. Um, there are e-spinners, uh, which are electronic spinners that are, that are motor driven. Uh, one of the, um, the machines that my daughter uses is um, a Hanson Craft Pro e-spinner Pro. Um, we have lots of um, demos of her um, spinning our various tops um, from the with the e-spinner. Um, she also has a Magic Craft um, Gem and Rose and Aura, um, all excellent wheels, um, but also hand drafting um, using a drop spindle. Um, while the top fibers are very, very even and parallel, is also can you can also make very, very fine yarns. Now uh, at a Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival a couple of years ago, um, we introduced a blend of yak fiber 
with mulberry silk. And a young lady um, came up and she had a drop spindle with her and she just went to town you know, spinning out a very, very, very fine thread from that, from that top that we made. Now, let's talk about different fibers. Now, the different fibers in a blend have different fiber characteristics, and some of those fiber characteristics are kind of really not explained really well out there in the world. And some of those characteristics um, are very, very simple uh, to, to visualize. And if you happen to have a book called the Fiber Source Book, um, it has a wonderful reference uh, that shows all the various sheep breeds and other exotic breeds. That shows you examples of the structure of the uh, locks of the fibers and has some very good information. But when we get into the more technical aspects of fiber, um, a human hair, let's say it's approximately 100 microns. Um, the finest wools that we're using is a 14 and a half micron merino wool. Human hair um, has virtually no curvature. Yeah, sorry for the folks you know, who have curly hair, but it's not real curvature. Curvature is spring. It's the bounce. It's the elasticity of the fiber. Um, it adds um, both that type of memory as well as cohesion and the ability to hold, which is the ability to hold other fibers to, with it. So when we take a look at using different base fibers in blends, um, all those fibers need to play well together. Now, why is that important for a hand spinner, especially someone that's starting out? Because um, some fibers have no curvature or extreme high curvature, um, extremely high curvature um, will have a lot of resistance. So there'll be you know, more attention to your draft on those fibers and being able to recognize when you have begun to draft them, pull them apart too hardly. Now, let's go back to what I showed you initially was commercially made top. Now, commercially made top, um, even though this is a very, very, very nice 18 and a half micron merino wool, um, it, they, it's produced based on production, volume of, of pounds produced per hour. So we're putting, these machines put an awful lot of draft pressure on those fibers to pull them through the machines as quickly and as much as possible. And in the, about four or five years ago, a company called the Woolmark Company, which is still in existence, had a, has on has and have has and have on their website uh, descriptions of the various different types of processing pads, being worsted, semi worsted, and woolen. Um, they don't talk about hand, but what they do say did say was that in the early days, up until a few quite a few years ago, they were not very concerned um, concerned with curvature or that elasticity. Because basically with the merino industry, they're trying to produce as much yarn or threads as possible from those fibers. And they don't really care, or they didn't care about uh, the fiber, ca fiber ca characteristic of memory and elasticity. They just wanted to have very, very strong fiber that would be able to withstand punishment um, in making um, outer garments and suiting fabrics. So their concern was get as much out as possible. Unfortunately, um, when we, we are all kind of involved in the creative craft and creative uh, paths of making something from a, from a fiber, those fiber characteristics are very, very important. 
So as I showed you with the commercially made top, drafting from the end is really, really hard. I'm putting a lot of effort into that. And that's just because it has been so, what we call, overdrafted, uh, that it requires lots of different techniques of how to work with it as a hand spinner. Now, I'm not, I'm not, you know, per se, uh, that knowledgeable in doing things with um, folding the top and going through the exercise of having to divide the top uh, so that you can, you know, draft it from a a roving that you make um, because really top is supposed to be fibers that are all parallel and as they're all parallel they should be able to pass by each other very easily and be able to be drafted in a manner that helps you to uh, camera camera just literally effortlessly draft that fiber out. So now let's say let's look at the, the different other parts of this fiber structure. One of those structural elements is scale height. You know, fibers have scale um, scales on them. Wool fiber, the finer the finer and finer uh, merinos. They are, they've been reducing the scale height. They've been through breeding they've been, and different um, management practices, been able to get those scales to be very smooth. So you don't have any of that catching, that itch. Now my daughter, uh, when she started out uh, hand spinning and she was going to the, to, her, to the yarn store and she bought her top, um, she found that a lot of it was just very difficult to draft out and it was quite itchy and quite not very comfortable. So she went to, uh, you know, and well, we, we, were, we had bred alpacas, so she decided that she was going to try and hand spin the alpaca fiber that we had. Now, alpaca fiber has very little to no curvature, um, the highest curvature um, that we've seen that we actually raised them for was about 60 degrees of curvature. Wool, merino wool is somewhere between 110 to 180 degrees of curvature. Um, but what you found is that those, the lack of scale height um, made the fibers very, very slick. The lack of um, any curvature also makes them very, very slick. So when you're hand, trying to hand spin that fiber, um, one choice is to blend it with a wool or other fiber that does have uh, more of a curvature, more of a scale to it, something so that, that those fibers can hold together. Um, so when you put your draft on them, they will draft at a, at a tension level that you feel that you, that you can gauge as it goes either in down the, the drop spindle or through the uh, spinning wheel or through the e-spinner. You can actually feel the draft. You can watch the fibers as they glide um, into um, the yarn. Unfortunately, um, in order to hand spin uh, the alpaca as a beginner, it was very, very difficult uh, for my daughter to do that. Um, you know, she persevered, she did a really wonderful job. And we then began to really see that it's not just a fiber, it's what the fiber is, its structure, and how it's actually produced from the mills that you are gonna be um, purchasing it from. So you have curvature, Curvature is that springiness in memory. You have cohesion. You know, in cohesion, you know, in, in this example of the commercially made um, top, it's as it goes across. But as I'm pulling, I mean, this is very, very almost 
unpleasant. It's almost like work. Yeah, and when we hand spin, we really don't want to work. We want to enjoy and have fun with it. So what we had done is we found um, a lot of domestic Rambouillet wool. Rambouillet is a Merino family wool. Um, Louis XIV imported them and bred them um, for a type of uh, Merino that both had elasticity, um, um, good deal of curvature, and cohesion. Now, this is Camera. This is Rambouillet. It all, this, we make this top in our mill, and as you can see, it basically self-drafts. It's very, 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 very easy to work with. It has nice cohesion, as you can see across. So this is what we consider a building block uh, type of wool to, for blending. Now, in the fiber source book, in the Merino family, um, you'll see um, all, the Polworth um, is also related. Polworth fiber is, is also an excellent um, fiber to blend with because it has a cohesion. Um, it's a little bit stronger in micron. Um, the, the Rambouillet that I showed you was about an 18.2 micron. Um, the um, Polworth is about... 20, 20, 21 microns. Um, but that ability of the base fiber in a blend or by itself to have really good elasticity, good cohesion, and it's processed in a manner that you retain those fiber characteristics makes it extremely easy to hand spin from. Now, what my daughter has done is she, you know, put together um, a di different levels of kits for um, for hand spinners. And the beginner uh, type of blends that we recommend because they're they do basically self draft. Now. Fortunately, I don't have the interaction here to you know, have someone say to me, what is draft? Draft is the pulling pressure, literally, that, that draws that fiber um, to um, the drum in the spinner to, to bring that fiber onto the spinning, the spinning um, drum lost the word for it um, and what we came up with is Polworth and Rambouillet together uh, the reason why we would we blend the two together is because they're, com they're definitely complementary and each has a slightly different hand to it um, now the Rambouillet is virtually as soft as a cloud the Polworth has a little bit more texture to it. I mean, another fiber that has, that does really well in blends is BFL, Blue Flace Leicester. Um, we blend that with Rambouillet. Now, that fiber is a little, a little bit stronger in Micron uh, than the Rambouillet, but it has um, a slightly longer staple length, and its scale height makes it smoother. So one of the things that happens is that when we, we begin to build up blends is that the blends have to interact and what we call play well together. So that they're not going to separate, they're not going to fight each other um, as, as you're either um, drafting them into a spinning wheel or knitting them um, or weaving or, or the end product, how that's going to perform and behave. So for a beginner, the beginning kits that we strongly recommend are a Polworth Rambouillet blend, 
a BFL and Rambouillet, and a Merino, 18 half micron Merino and Rambouillet. Now, the the way that we achieve here the preservation of the fiber characteristics is because we operate the, our commercial machines based on how the fiber flows through the machine versus making thousands of pounds of a blend. Very different type of approach. Um, well, we go to the next next level kit, um, what, we, what we call um, a beginner luxury. Now, each sheep breed was shaped by humans, by the human need and the native environment in which they were raised. This created many sheep breeds, each with their own unique wool qualities. Qualities meaning um, the thermodynamic, how warm they are, how well they repel water, um, do they retain you know, more or less lanolin, um, do they wear really strongly, are they made for um, uh, carpets, are they made for uh, upholstery, are they made for you know, you know, underwear, uh, socks, whatever. Um, so, and those, pro those properties affect both how the wool spins how it performs as a yarn, and how the finished garment wears. So there's, there's a definite synergy of relationships between uh, the marrying of different fibers together and how they are processed into top, especially maintaining full paralleliz parallelization of those fibers. So in a uh, beginning luxury blend, um, again, you know, these, the, the blends of Polworth and Rambouillet, BFL and Rambouillet, and just plain Rambouillet are all extremely luxurious beginner types of fibers to work with. Predominantly because the evenness of how they draft allows you to, to maintain a, a, a greater consistency in how, how you tactically feel the fibers being drawn onto the spinning whirl. I think it's whirl or drop. So we then get to, you know, and that's another set, that's another different type of kit kit line. Then we have what we call Beginner Plus. Now, again, you know, the BFL Rambouillet is definitely up there with it, and our Polworth Rambouillet is in that category. Um, but then we talk about a more of a constructed blend, which means we're putting together not the same types of protein fibers. We blended um, dyed merino with a little bit of rambouillet and a little bit of sparkle nylon. Now, what is interesting is that what we try to do is we wanted to maintain very similar um, characteristics in cohesion. So, the merino is ha, has cohesion as well as elasticity. The rambouillet has a list, elasticity, cohesion, and loft, the ability to basically bloom. And then the nylon um, is also a it's crimped and has a little bit of sparkle um, in the way that it's produced and it has its own degree of cohesion. So when you put those three together, you get something that is unique as a blend. Um, it can be drafted differently to produce different effects because you can tactically feel 
engage a consistent resistance in that draft from the fibers and this is left and right there so it's a little bit stiffer oh geez how to do this well, I was trying to get this other camera to work, but didn't have quite enough time. So, it drafts very easily. Now, but it's going to draft a little bit faster. So, what does that mean? We determine in the processing world that fibers are either soft fibers or hard fibers as far as the machines see them. The soft fiber, you know, most of your wools um, um, and some of your man, you know, your man-made fibers. Um, your angora and you know other protein fibers uh, they have oh God, where's, where's that note I got distracted okay we're gonna move on from that if anyone has a question about what I was leading into uh, maybe I'll remember what it was in a few minutes. Sorry about that. Um, but the, oh, so hard fibers, soft fibers. A hard fiber is a fiber that in the commercial machine actually goes through it at a higher velocity. It moves faster through the machine. So if you ever see blends of wools and silk, uh, you'll see a lot of times a lot of separation between the silk and the wool. Um, you can also have that type of separation when you're dealing with um, cellulose fibers and the various wools or cotton um, that you're working with. And that's because those fibers, um, based on um, both their uh, scale structure and the curvature um, they go through the machines quicker than the other fibers how we overcome that and how the industry overcomes that so they can blend uh, these different types of fibers is they created a machine called a duo blender that that machine basically adds another drafting zone so that um, as the fibers go through the pin drafter in the blending process, as they leave that final roller, the delivery roller, there's now additional tension that's being applied to, be, to pick up that delivered um, fiber, uh, fiber to keep all those fibers aligned and at an equal tension. So this is why when you, when you look at certain types of blends and you're trying to spin with them and the fibers are, are kind of seem to be separating away from each other as you, as you draft them, as you spin, it's, it's because uh, you're, the, the blend is a hard and soft fiber blend and it has not been blended evenly. Now, we had a, a young woman who asked us, well, you did a mulberry silk and 18 and a half micron merino blend, and we had the same question of a blend that we did, that we do between Angora, Rabbit, and Rambouillet. And what we did is that we blended those fibers in our, in our methodology that are very, that's slow and steady, 
watching the fibers, maintaining the characteristics, and they were able to basically almost homogeneously blend with the other fibers so you do not see them. So when our those fibers are spun, especially if somebody's spinning one of the most fun blends, which we call, which my daughter, as far as the kits um, are involved, um, what she calls it, these are, this is the fly kits. For confident spin spinners looking to experience different fibers, each fiber requires a slightly different technique and provides the perfect opportunity to learn new skills. So one of those blends is a 14 and a half micron merino, which is an extremely high curvature wool and light brown yak. Now yak um, is a short staple. It has very little curvature. It does have a little bit of structure that could be held on to. And when you make something like that type of blend, what you look to do is you look to try and get those fibers to blend evenly or as evenly as possible because you do want to be able to maintain a, the ability of the fibers to hold together and not cause them to um, fail. Now, the failure is um, it be either two things. You, only, you blend it minimally or you blend it too much. So there's a artistic um, criteria um, and practical criteria where you do not blend sometimes for total um, um, uniformity of, of all the fibers within that top. So most of our, um, our 14 half micron merino and yak blends, they are not as completely blended and homogeneous as our Rambo and Gora and other blends um, so because the fiber characteristics of the fibers in the blend, they would not work well um, as a finished yarn. Another really fun uh, blend, which requires different skill levels, is um, Grey Gotland and Rambouillet blend, or White Gotland and Rose or Mint fiber. Now, those are both cellulose fibers. Um, and all these fibers have different uh, fiber characteristics as far as their structures, but they can blend well together and be held together within the blend so that when you draft it, even though there is a little bit more of a um, tactile learning skill field, something like that, I don't know how to describe that, but there's a way to draft those fibers into your spinning frame, spinning mill, so that spinning wheel, so that you can evenly draft them into it. Now, using what we do, they're not production um, top. They're all drafted for maintaining characteristics, so it's be much easier to work with. And Rambouillet Angora, you now have two of the most loftiest fibers. Um, that we work with, and that can be a definite challenge um, in hand spinning. However, um, once, um, let me just look at what my notes here. So, the, the, the two fibers, as far as my daughter is concerned, and I 100% agree, agree with, with her, that they were be made, made to be blended together. Um, it's just that one has to make sure that as you draft that, the end of that top sliver, uh, that you're not allowing it to pull you too hard, so you, hard in the draft. So you have to be really conscious of being very even in how you apply your draft to that fiber and as long as you're trying to make a you know a uniform um, thickness yarn, there is literally a rhythm that you have to learn in order to get it to spin onto the wheel um, extremely evenly. And when we get to 
the next level uh, of, of kits that we're putting together, uh, where you begin to spread your wings, dealing with more tactile feedback from the blend and how it wants to be drafted onto your spinning wheel. Um, there's a mixed BFL and Rambouillet. Now, mixed BFL, there are two colors of BFL that are used. One is brown and one is oatmeal. It makes a lovely type of cocoa or taupe type of color with the Rambouillet. Um, and the difference in the pigment colors of the BFL um, actually, those fibers um, feel and behave slightly differently when being drafted. Um, so when you mix them together, um, you have a, a tactile type of experience where you have to be able to let it draft in and then how to um, pull itself and it's not something that you just can do um, by just saying here's the top draft it from the end and life goes on it's more of a coordination of how it feels and how it's going to come off of, out of the top end of the top as it's spun the next blend which is um, a little bit more um, fun and exciting is Baby Camel, Merino, and Rambouillet. Now, Baby Camel um, is a camelid. It's very similar to um, alpaca in the sense that it has very almost no scale height. It's a very slick fiber. It's a very short staple length. Um, traditionally, it gets blended with um, an 18 and a half micron Merino wool um, to try and hold it together. Um, but the baby camel itself has v v virtually no loft at all, um, so we add a little bit of Rambouillet to it. So when you're when you're actually feeling um, how um, that top um, spin drafts. it is uh, yeah. see it's just oh Jesus it just drafts very evenly so here you have a very slick fiber the camel baby camel. You have the resistance of the high curvature and loft of both the Merino and Rambouillet. And it's not allowing that camel to get ahead of you. It's, whole, it's giving you the ability To draft that very evenly but it's not one where you actually have the resistance that you have when you don't when you just have a merino and rambouillet the merino and rambouillet has a little bit of resistance so when you're working with it you can it's a little bit more forgiving if you you know, lose a teeny bit of concentration or you become a little bit more aggressive. Um, this type of a blend, because it's so easy how it drafts off the tip, you have to be very, very conscious and consistent in interpreting how that fiber is, is moving from your hands to the spinning wheel. So those are um, different um, blends that we have made for different kits um, that we can put together for you. Um, every uh, you know every kit basically is centered around a one ounce sample pack of 
the type of fiber. And in um, this picture over uh, to the right, you see there are those little shiny packs. Those are the one ounce sample packs of fibers. Um, it's a, you know, one of the reasons that we do that, you know, in, a, in these little sample packs is that um, fiber, wool, or it doesn't matter whether it's cottons or cellulose, every fiber um, reacts to water differently, and it's technically called regain, the ability to regain moisture. Because in the processing, uh, you know, in the, either commercially or even if you're using um, hand cards or hand combs, you are putting tension, you're, you're moving the fibers through, um, you're, you're heating them up because you're going through a physical motion with them, it dries them out. Um, so being conscious of humidity is extremely important, um, especially when you have a fiber, you know, like the Gotlands. Um, Gotland um, needs to be able to be in a balanced environment in which the fiber itself um, becomes um, more, best way to describe it is individualized. And it's not meaning that they're like single monofilaments. It's, it means that they are now able to um, be pulled through the machines so that they will then blend more evenly. Um, part of the problem that we find when we look at commercial blends um, is that a lot of times they are, they are only blended um, uh, two or three passes, if that much, uh, and the fibers have not been given a chance to um, actually uh, build a cohesiveness that is an, an, a homogene homogeneous nature so that the building blocks, and you know, let's visualize this, uh, the Legos, each fiber is a Lego, and each Lego snaps onto um, the next Lego. So you have you know, your, your Rambouillet, you have your Merino, then you have your, um, your Silk, or whatever. Um, all those types of building blocks of fibers uh, makes up you know a blend that will work together now if you some fibers uh, especially when you, you start dealing with cellulose fibers uh, they have very very different characteristics but some act as soft fibers I mean I can process um, C cell uh, through a, a straight pin drafter. I don't have to use a, um, a do a blending pin drafter. Versus when I have to, when I have to do blends with um, mint or um, rose, or and some and depending upon the blend, sometimes with pearl fiber. Um, C cell um, is also a fiber that can be blended either in a straight pin drafter or through a dual blender but part of the um, challenges is that each fiber once it's introduced into a blend with other fibers might not behave properly in a straight pin drafter versus a dual blending pin drafter. I know this is about, about spinning and spinning kits, um, but part of the thing that my, you know, my daughter and I both you know, were faced with in the beginning, you know, 20 some odd years ago, was really a lack of good descriptions on how fibers are processed, what it means when they're processed, you know, the nomenclature, um, what is you know, worsted top, what is semi-worsted, what is woolen, uh, and what is hand process. So there are, there are technically four processing paths, um, and each of those paths, um, when you try and work with those fibers as a hand spinner, 
um, there are different challenges. Now, we've only been talking about here uh, working with tops. Now, and we also don't blend our tops in our card. Um, our carding machine um, is what's called a worsted card. Now, a worsted card, semi-worsted card, a woolen card, all of those three different um, process, well, processing pads have um, what we call, what's called clothing. The clothing is either the pins or the wires that go over the drums of the carding machine. And the carding machine's primary mission in life is to um, open up the fiber, begin to, in the worsted process, make them parallel, and get out the gross amount of dissimilar fibers, vegetable matter, skin tabs, and other uh, major debris. It does not make the fibers truly parallel. And after the fibers come out of the card, no matter what which type of card it is, that fiber, and let's visualize a fiber as a length, oops, it's a length of fiber, okay. Those fibers, when it comes out, because they're going over drums, now there's things called um, um, workers and strippers and mains and, uh, and doffers and all that stuff. All those, and there's even a, a, a drum called a comb on a card. So go figure that one out. Um, but when it comes out of the card, all those fibers are not straight in the sense they, they've come out of the fiber, out of the machine in a linear fashion. But because they've been going over all these different drums, they have what's called their hooks. So the fiber on each end, the end that first comes out and the end that comes out at the end has a slight curve to them. Now, top making is the only processing paths where the goal is to remove those hooks so not only are the fibers all parallel, they're all straight. Uh, Semi-worsted and woolen, that's not the concern. Now, someone's going to definitely say, well, cotton is combed and cotton is a very short staple length. Yes, it is a short staple length. So they made combing machines that comb cotton. So there is kind of, um, there's some inaccuracy when we say that all short staple length fibers have to go to the woolen process and all long staple length have to go through um, top making or the worsted process. That's not necessarily the case. Um, but in order to survive the process and of producing good quality top, the fibers have to be, cut, be all parallel. They have to be totally clean or within 99.4% clean. Um, and that provides both the spinning mills, commercial spinners or the hand spinners, the ability to make extremely fine and strong yarns. So when we characterize the worsted yarn, worsted made from top is going to be a very, very strong yarn. Semi-worsted, uh, because the processing really ends, pretty much ends at the at the card, um, and it doesn't go through three stages of pin drafting um, before going to a rectilinear comb for combing and then going through pin drafters two more times to get rid of the hooks again because the, the comb produce hooks as well because it, it's even though it's a drawing off process because it's going over um, rollers um, it does develop a hook in one in one direction the the aft end of the fiber is straight. This might be a little bit too technical, it's a little bit too crazy, but when you're looking at hand spinning, 
and you want looking from the, the point of view of a beginner, the single most important thing is that the top that you choose to draft from, you literally should be able to take it Left and right. Okay. Why can't I? And with even and gentle pressure, draft it out as you watch those fibers maintaining their parallel or orientation. And that will make an extremely strong yarn. Semi-worsted, because you do not have a rectilinear comb involved, you're not combing the wools. And what that rectilinear comb does, besides getting rid of all the short and dissimilar fibers, is that it produces a micron range that is within approximately three microns. So they're all extremely similar in the fiber diameter in each of the fibers that are that's in a worsted top. In semi-worsted, that is not the case. Um, what happens is that you basically have areas in which the fibers are, are still disorganized. They're not parallel. They're a little clumpish, and they can have voids in them. So when a yarn is made, especially when you start making a bulky or a heavyweight yarn, those, if you do not put in a lot of twist, a lot of tension in the twisting of the yarn, uh, it has built-in weaknesses or points that will fail. Um, woolen, because woolen is a is a specifically uh, design processing pass for specific types of garments and specific use, um, the the um, Woolen sliver is does have some voids in it. It is does have some weaknesses in it, um, but because of the way that the card is clothed, the types of pinning and all, uh, a woolen card is a little bit more uniform in output than a semi-worsted card. Um, so when you are looking for how to determine the best place to start with in hand spinning is to find um, the most even, cool, and easy to draft top, worsted process top, to learn how to hand spin. Once you begin to experiment with you know, the various types of kits that you know, we've produced and other ones that we can produce after we discuss with you what your goal is and what your challenges are, because we literally could put together um, different blends of fibers that will react totally different in the hand, sp hand spinning uh, process. Um, so that, you know, there's a lot of additional learning one can do with um, how to develop different techniques in how you draft on to your spinning wheel or your um, or even with your drop spindle. Um, so that is pretty much um, what I have to say about the, the, the different things to look for when we're dealing with hand spinning. You know, we're looking for a learning how to, to easily draft off. Now, easily draft off does not mean that there is not work, there's not coordination, there's not a quote unquote, quote unquote dance of how you your hand-eye coordination has to be. But when you're working with something that's coming from really well-constructed top, it should be the easiest possible you know, fiber form to hand spin from. So that's kind of 
it with that. Um, we are we are on Facebook, uh, Main Top Mill. We um, have our website is maintopmill.com. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Again, very simple, Main Top Mill on YouTube. Uh, and my daughter spent you know quite a bit of time um, des you know describing and videoing her hand spinning all the various types of blends um, that we have made so far to date. Um, and each of the descriptions of the products on our product page on Shopify, uh, you'll see there are videos, links to those videos of how the fibers um, hand spin. So um, if there are different types of fibers that one is, that you are interested in, uh, there's one thing they should be aware of. All textile machines you know, have a micron range in which they're designed to operate in. So as I mentioned earlier, yes, they do make combing machines for cotton, but they're specifically made for that type of fiber. The, the mathematicians, the chemists, uh, the mechanical engineers, uh, they have all spent the time and effort to develop the different types of uh, drumming and gear ratios and all the various mathematics to figure out how to get those fibers to go through the machines to produce the end product that is desired. So when we look at you know, our goal of when we want to learn how to hand spin, it is critically important to understand the different processing paths the fibers go through, the difference between you know, crafting of tops versus production, mass production of tops. Um, and as a hand spinner, because we're all involved in the hand process, and we have to also recall that in the 13th century um, that when the Worcester Council was formed in, in Worcester, England, uh, they were making all the tops with hand combs. They were hand combing to make tops. So the hand process is to is directly mimicked in the rectilinear comb. The way that the, the fibers are drawn across the apron and then brushed by the rotary comb is also the same motion that you do in the hand process. Now, when we describe what we do when working, trying to work with what's the top, it is a very heavy mechanical type of process, but it can be geared to make top that is extremely easy to spin from. So uh, we're, our, mate, our website is the maintopmill.com. Uh, we are on Facebook. We have our YouTube page, everything Main Top Mill. Um, we are looking forward to um, the show at the end of the month. We'll have more information of different promos and discounts that we will have. And we will also eventually have you know, our, our little puppy, which is the, you know, kind of a descriptor that one can use and visualize for softness, cuddliness, and, and just sheer joy of processing with fibers. And we wish everyone the best in, you know, learning better and more um, controlled methods of hand spinning and we look forward to uh, talking with you all uh, down the road about um, what um, one needs or what one could consider for one's hand spinning project. Thank you very much. Um, it's my daughter Erin and me Bob. We're your fiber design imagineers and we're very happy to have been here Thank you very much.
and have a very great weekend.